Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. The Binance versus SEC. We're going to talk about it. And Ripple's roadmap. You're going to want it. And Ripple goes through the treasury. We'll tell you all about it. XRP hits a six-year triangle, and you're going to like it. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive exclusive content. Excuse me. $1.67 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is off by 0.4%. $42,185 in change for Bitcoin. $2,247 in change for Ethereum. Tether market cap is $90.5 billion plus. XRP is at $0.62. Cents. And you know what? At one point in time, so was Bitcoin. And you know what? At one point in time, so was Ethereum. Hang in there, everybody. I, it's on days like this, I'm reminded of that, and I'm reminding you. Here we see we're off by a half percent on the 24-hour, and we see that is really most of that's in the last hour, and off by 4.3 on the seven-day. Let's take a look at the range of price very quickly between 61.87 on the bottom and 64.36 on the top. We are at the bottom right now, so you can see everything's happening in the last hour, pulling down on the price. We'll keep an eye on it. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, institutional custody. If you're a retail investor, you can't get it unless, yes, that's right, <laughs> unless you're doing what I'm doing and so many other people are doing, I trust capital IRAs. The only thing better than buying crypto is buying tax-free crypto. And really, the truth be told is, is that there's nowhere there at a retail level that you can get institutional custody except at I trust capital because that's exactly how they custody their assets with institutional custody. That is a remarkable thing. And we add in the fact that we may see the approval of the ETFs. Think about having a tax free Bitcoin in your IRA. Think about that for a minute or gold knowing that gold is predicted to go to $3,000 plus. So these are all a perfect uh, questions to ask yourself. If it's right for you, click the link to my sponsor underneath the video. Oh boy, here we go. Binance versus SEC. Binance US makes another bid to dismiss the lawsuit. I hope that they're able to because we know that the SEC has not done well in the last handful of court cases against crypto companies. Hopefully this continues here. I would like to see Binance US get the ability to right the ship, as they say. We will keep you up to date on that. Then here's a sign of the times from Ashley Prosper and Kobisi letter here. And it says basically Citigroup to shut down its municipal business in an effort to improve profitability. Oh, the bank said that the business is no longer viable given their commitment to increase overall returns. So this is a sign of the times right here. A lot of the events are scheduled for March to April 2024 time frame. Be cautious and have a plan. It's not a bad idea. You know, when you think of the ISO need to be implemented by March 24 next year in some instances and things of that nature fall into that March, April window in other areas as well. It does make sense to make sure that we got a plan together, especially if we see some kind of a cyber attack. Right. Nothing groundbreaking to report, says James Seifert here. Uh, but four different issuers have met with the SEC regarding Bitcoin ETF filings in the last few days. BlackRock met with them yesterday for the third time in as many weeks, while Grayscale, Franklin, and Fidelity each had meetings last week. You know, again, everyone is anxiously, anxiously waiting, excuse me, anxiously waiting the approval or not of these things or another delay. But, you know, the market is anticipating an approval. And if it is, I tell you, things are absolutely going to drastically change over time for this market because we're going to see an entire new area and sector of investors begin to have exposure to the space and the assets in the space through ETFs. It could be very, very big. Uh, listen to this. Mike Novogratz wanted to buy Circle. Take a listen to this. Seriously. You know, then we try to buy, we try to buy Circle. Uh, at one point, we were really close with Jeremy uh, to buying Circle. And then even when we couldn't buy Circle, we were like, hey, can we just buy the stablecoin business? And probably got greedy in, in not investing. But that's been one of my big 
big misses because I, I listen, it was hard to do, right? There's only two that won. Uh, well, three. Paxos was, was a damn good business for a while. Um, but I, I, I saw it, I wanted it, and I just couldn't get myself in it. Uh, I'll tell you the other interesting game. I the best business in, in all of crypto. Yeah. I know everybody still hates it, but yes, it's been phenomenal. But it is a rate, it is a call on rates. So if, let's say, rates come back down again, well, they'll, make less money. they'll make less money, but they're still, I mean, they're making a billion dollars a quarter. Yeah, I guess they're a self funding call option on rates. So every time rates go up, they make more money, but they make money if rates go to zero. It's not at, bad. At, at zero, they, they, they don't make as much, because, but their operating costs are very small. And there you have it. And look, this is one of the reasons that I point to Circle and USDC because they have p positioned themselves. If you haven't seen the video from this morning, please go watch it. Jeremy Allaire talks about how he went to the Promontory Group, which is really a think tank backed by a three-letter agency, right? And that was really like one of the things that sticks out to me, like, well, this is a guy who understood the right path to take to begin to have the ability to position circle and usdc to even be considered eventually someday in the future as a retail digital dollar for the united states we'll see we'll see how it shakes out this is anthony rouse from ripple here he says it's about risk mitigation so things take time to change these programs are multi-year programs it is different from just downloading a piece of software onto your phone it is uh, just such a, a young technology the private sector is leading the way with digitized form of a ledger anyone can now work on the same ledger compared to the past however it is important to remember that with today's payment system we we are in the same era as emails were back then. Now it is interactive and instant. And that is the moment that we're getting ready to move to. And it is extremely exciting. That's Anthony Ralph right there. I just wanted to say those highlights because we got to keep moving for this video here. Because we still need to take a look at this. Ripple 2023, shout out to Mr. Man for this. Latest partnerships and trends in cross-border payments. What I want to show you here is Ripple Roadmap. As for Ripple's future, the roadmap seems focused on further integration of blockchain technology, expanding its network of partnerships, and continuously innovating to meet the changing demands of global finance. Ripple's role in shaping the future of cross-border payments. In conclusion, Ripple 2023 stands as a beacon of innovation and progress in the cross-border payment sector. This is, I mean, you know, this is where we're, this is where we're going. They are sitting in the front of where the entire financial industry is about to go and traditional trading market, right? With this expanding global footprint, technological advancements and commitment to efficient and secure transactions, Ripple's not just keeping pace with demands of global finance, but actively shaping its future. That's what's happening. You can watch a detailed analysis and discussion of the financial impact of uh, RippleNet and the $30 billion that's been done through RippleNet, which has recently been rebranded to Ripple Payments, right? Very exciting where we're going, ladies and gentlemen. Then there's this. Ripple is going through the Treasury. This is about the finance and Treasury management in Switzerland. And it is hugely positive here. Loving this for us. Look, this is the document, and there are references to XRP and Ripple all through this document, but for the sake of time, right, but we verified it's there. So uh, shout out to Amelie for this. As currently, industry giants such as Santander and SEB, as well as tech giants such as Google, are already part of the Ripple platform, also as investors. But again, what this all really comes from here is KPMG, which is a ripple is going through the treasury through treasury and it is ripple and xrp they're discussing in this document and uh as it says in here and there's 27 different references to ripple in here and i'll just bring this up also just so you can see and six different references of xrp throughout the document as well so look look at what we're seeing with medico custody right Look at what we're seeing with everything that is taking place. We are on the edge of custody solutions being introduced in large favor. And then we're on the edge of stablecoin legislation. 
These are two vital key pieces to getting this space opened up from the start without stifling innovation, but actually complementing it with these, these uh, solutions. Let's take a look at this really quickly before we get out of here. It's Agrag Crypto. XRP nears a six-year symmetrical triangle pattern. Here are the price targets. We're going to love them all. Agrag Crypto being featured here in this article by Coinpedia. Basically, XRP could potentially reach $6.40 or even aim for $22.30 contingent upon the timing of the breakout. January 24 breakout propelling XRP to $6.40 brace for impact as the trajectory requires a substantial 923% surge from its current value. It's a bold move promising significant rewards for those willing to navigate the journey. And then you can see there's the chart right there. And then here it highlights also the other scenario, a more audacious target, a breakout in July 2024 leading to a $22 plus XRP. This scenario implies a staggering 3,466% increase from XRP's current value. Remember, history has said that these moves would be nothing for XRP to do. There's no guarantee that we could know what it'll do, but the charts are saying that something one way or the other is coming. There is a make or break moment coming for all of us, and I can't wait to get there. I hope you'll join us in the Freedom Zone, ladies and gentlemen, where the real conversations are going to the next level. And in here today, we are going to take apart the World Economic Forum. You're going to want to know about it. They just never quit. And it's very important that we all stay in tune to what their next moves are because it can affect every single one of us. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the next one.